<laughs> G'day mate, how you going? My name's Dan and welcome to the Green and Gold Life. In this series of videos, we're gonna take a look at the fundamental elements of turf grass management for the domestic turf curator. So uh, when Christmas time rolls around and the party's at your joint, we wanna have the deck looking sweet, mate. So all of the rallies can be impressed about how uh, good a hard work you've put in over the year. And the aim is to have the father-in-law say, gee whiz, mate, the deck's not looking too bad, eh? <laughs> you beauty. So. In this video, I wanted to cover off uh, fertilizing one's turf grass. So uh, it's important to provide it the correct amount of nutrients at the right time in the growing season and all of this sort of stuff. So stick around for the rest of the vid. It is now time for the obligatory call for a like and a subscription. So if you find this video helpful in any way, please like and subscribe and forward it on to that mate that's got a lawn that resembles a teenager trying to grow a beard. <laughs> Radio, roll that intro, Dan. Let's get into it, son. <laughs> Radio. So, by employing the correct fertilizing practices out here on one's turf, <laughs> what we can expect to see is an increase in plant aesthetic. Well, duh. <laughs> by that, I mean, what are we really doing? Well we're sort of supporting the grass nutrient requirement throughout the growing season to maintain plant health. But also what we're gonna be doing is uh, supporting soil, uh, positive soil culture as well through things like increased organic content, but also um, microbial activity as well. So it's super important to make sure we're supporting all of the systems of the turf, be it the plant or the soil. However, if done incorrectly, mate, look out. You know, we can have surges in our growth rate uh, leading to scalping, things like that. We can see detrimental things such as burning or, uh, or possibly even disease because we've applied fertilizer at the wrong time or we've just simply wasted it. So it's super important to make sure you're following correct fertilizing practices. So what is fertilizer, I hear you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked, mate, eh? <laughs> Essentially, it's a substance we're gonna to apply to our turf, which can either be uh, organic or synthetic and it's to replace the nutrients that the, that the plant has taken out of the soil profile to sustain its health throughout the growing season. So um, there are three main types of, of fertilizer as well. We have our organic, which is my favorite. We also have uh, synthetic and we have our controlled release. So let's start off with our organic. So um, this one is carbon based. Uh, so it's essentially manufactured from things like leftover plant material. So for example, our, um, our mulch mowing can be considered fertilizing. We also have uh, things that you know, are made from animal byproducts, be it manure, guano. Um, also uh, animals themselves, sometimes fish are emulsified or, um, or parts of the animal could be turned into fertilizer, that sort of thing. So essentially what we do is we, we apply this to our turf and then um, we, we water it in and the soil microbes actually have to turn that nitrogen into a form that the plant can actually use and then it's uptaken by the roots and uh and then um you know supports the sustainability of the turf so um it is it is like i mentioned before carbon based and there is a lower risk of burning your turf so you could exceed your desired um fertilizer amount uh like by heaps and not burn your turf that's not recommended because a lot of it will just leach out and you're wasting product, but essentially um, you've got a lower risk of burning. However, on the other hand, it is a little bit more exy so, um, than, than some of your synthetic turfs. But to me, the trade-off is well worth it because you're improving your organic matter in your soil and supporting microbial activity. So to me, I do enjoy a good organic fertilizer. Well, my plant does. <laughs> I prefer to use it. The second one is going to be our synthetic fertilizers. So something like our um, like urea, you might get from Bunnings, like a 4600. So these synthetic fertilizers, oh, obviously that's just one example. Um, these are often referred to as like Red Bull fertilizers, man, because it's just like an instant hit of nutrient, be it just nitrogen, they're also phosphorus, potassium, all that sort of stuff. So um, our synthetic ones are a little bit cheaper to procure as well, so they are a little bit friendlier on the hip pocket, but they do carry a higher risk of burning your grass. So say, for example, you apply it to your, to your turf uh, above the recommended rate, or for example, if you blow it off your driveway on footpath onto the lawn, and you've got a higher concentration across the edge, you can burn your turf as well. So you need to be careful about that. 
And these ones are typically non-carbon based, so they're not really made from things like animals or plants, that sort of thing. They do have their place low, it's, it's not all negative. So for example, I don't mind going out with a little bit of urea post reno just to give it a quick hit with nitrogen, man, eh? And get it pumping. So, um, so it does have its place, don't get me wrong. Uh, I generally tend to, to shy away from it just, just, through, um, just through plant health. But hey, there's nothing wrong with using it. And the third one is going to be our controlled release. So this is where our fertilizer is, is again, it's sort of a synthetic one, but it, it comes with a coating around the granule. Uh, I can't quite remember off the top of my head, I'll have to put it on the screen what that coating is. But uh, essentially that retards the degradation of all of that material in the soil profile and sustains its release over like a, an eight or a 12, uh, eight or a 12 week period. So again, it's a little bit cheaper than our organics, but um, yeah, to me, I prefer an organic. So there are three main types. Um, these also come in either a granular form, so you can get it uh, and apply it with a broadcast spreader or a drop spreader. And then you also have liquid fertilizers as well, which can be either applied to the soil profile by watering in, or you can actually apply it to the leaf on a dry day and let the plant absorb it that way. So it doesn't have to go through that, that change uh, that the soil microbes have to Put it through so you can apply it directly to the leaf and have it be more of an instant hit as well so say for example like i have here i have a section that has been damaged by grubs and i have a reduced root system because of that so i could consider going out with uh with a direct application to the leaf and have it be more effective so um you know you may consider something like a like a like an organic fur every 12 weeks or maybe say every eight weeks and then top it up with, with liquids or you may decide to go a full liquid route or a full granular route. There's so many positives, negatives that need to be considered. So yeah, that's a quick download on fertilizers. So when it comes to fertilizer, like I mentioned before, it's a carrier for all of the chemical elements that the, requ the plant requires as a part of its function. So it's gonna support different functions within the plant. So the first one's gonna be our macronutrients. So these ones are required in higher dosages as opposed to our micronutrients. So our micros are more required in trace elements. They all sustain uh, plant functionality, just some require more than the others. So um, the first one I wanted to discuss is our macros. So that's often expressed as a percentage on our bag of fertilizer, also known as the NPK balance. So the first ones being our nitrogen. So nitrogen is, is responsible for that nice green color. Um, so what that does is nitrogen is responsible for assisting in the production of chlorophyll. So chlorophyll in turn <laughs> is there to support photosynthesis. So um, when, the plast, when the plant harvests sun energy um, through chlorophyll, it can produce carbohydrates, all of that sort of thing. So that's why we need nitrogen. And typically that is the highest um, highest macro required throughout the growing season for turf. So typically around about that 12 or 15% of the bag will be worth nitrogen, plus or minus, you know, something like that. Next one is gonna be our phosphorus. So phosphorus is for our, the development of our root system and flowering. So um, it's just gonna, it's gonna assist in developing a nice healthy root system, a nice deep one and support, you know, harvesting of nutrient to support harvesting of nutrients from the soil profile. And the last one is going to be potassium. So this one um, assists, uh, assists in uh, rigidity of cells, but also, um, uh, also vigor of the plant and resistance to things like pests and diseases. So uh, that's, that's the three, that's the three macros. That also can be represented, if we want to think about it, like an up, down, and all around. Now, I can't remember where I heard that, but it's a cracking analogy, mate. So N is our up, that's going to support our leaf growth and, you know, a nice green colour. Uh, our down is going to be our phosphorus, you know, roots, all of that sort of thing, and all around plant health being our, um, our potassium. So they're our macronutrients. Our micronutrients as well. Uh, I'll list them up on the screen now because there's just miles too many to go through <laughs> and uh, I don't want to turn this into a university lecture mate. Eh? <laughs> so these are still required. So what we can do is we can get a soil sample at the start of the uh, growing season that takes into account our macronutrients and our micronutrients and we can get that back and we can see where we're deficient and what we need to apply to our lawns 
to make sure we get a nice healthy plant throughout the growing season. There's one particular micronutrient I wanted to pay particular attention to, and that's gonna be our iron, baby, yes! So uh, much like nitrogen, this is directly responsible for the production of chlorophyll in the leaf of our turf, and that's what gives us our dark, deep green color, baby. So that's our Instagram chemical, mate. <laughs> get a bit of that out there. So uh, typically in a granular fert, there is some, uh, for lawns, there is some iron as a part of that which helps give us that, that, yeah, that deep dark green color. So this may take say three to four days to, to take effect and then it may last about a week. So um, yeah, look for some of that <laughs> as a part of your next fert. So um, when it does come time to, to fertilizing, the first thing we wanna understand is our plant type. So is it a cool season or a warm season variety? So. The growth, habit on, the growth habit on those uh, two particular varieties are completely different. So um, we don't want to be fertilizing it at the incorrect time of the year. So um, first thing we want to understand is our, yeah, our grass variety. Second of all is, uh, you know, where are we in the growing season? Are we in the start, are we at the end? Are we mid season? That sort of thing. That'll dictate uh, how much we want to get out as well. So how much nitrogen per 100, mil, uh, per 100 meters squared. The next thing we need to consider is uh, the mode in which we want to get our fertilizer out. So for me today, I'll be going out with a granular app. So um, essentially because we've got a little bit of rain around here today and my leaf blade is already wet. So this is not recommended. Essentially because I'm going out with organics, it's, um, there's a low risk that this is going to burn because I'm going to go out with it and I'm going to get the, direct, uh, the sprinklers on directly and start watering that in. So uh, had this been more of a uh, synthetic fertilizer, we could have experienced burn because essentially we've got a little bit of water on the leaf, which is enough to activate the, the release of nitrogen and it'd be so concentrated that we'd burn our lawns. So um, that's why I'm going out with a, uh, a granular wrap. But what I did want to do was get a, actually a liquid app to the leaf today, but uh, because of all the rain, it just would have washed off and gone into the soil anyway. So um, that's why I've elected to go a, a granular wrap today. So once we've sort of understood our, our plants requirements, the variety, when to get our fertilizer out, how much to get out, all of that sort of thing, um, we need to then go and measure our lawn. So we need to understand how much lawn we have to understand how much nitrogen we want to give it, all of this sort of thing. So um, if you go onto the website, Go and check it out, the link will be down below. I have a couple of lawn plans there for um, anyone that's new to turf care. And that'll, that'll explain this whole process about how to calculate how much nitrogen we need, when, that sort of thing. So today I'll be going out at 0.25 kilograms of nitrogen per 100 meter squared. Um, and that should help assist in bringing the aesthetic of this turf up. So once we've done that, we've selected our mode. The next thing to do is to actually apply our fertilizer. So we'll weigh out how much we need and, uh, and then we'll apply that. Um, and we're gonna make a pass in two directions. So we're gonna go north-south and then we're gonna go east-west because no matter how hard we try, we're never gonna get it to exactly perfect on that one pass and for the broadcast spreader to go exactly where the last one left off. So if we do it in two directions, we're just making sure that we get a nice even coverage across the whole lawn. So uh, once we've done that, then we'll go through and we'll blow anything that's on our paths or on our driveways off because, because that iron that's uh, residual in the, in the chemical can actually stain our, our driveways and footpaths and our concrete, that sort of thing. So we want to blow that off and then we're going to water it in, man. So. That's the process. Why don't we break it out, eh? Today I'll be going out with the Plant Doctors Champion Lawn and Greens Fertilizer. So as I mentioned before, uh, with our MPK split or our up, down and all around, this one is a 16-1-9 blend. So 16 nitrogen, 1% uh, phosphorus and 9% potassium. So um, a great split there. And it comes with 3% 3 uh, 3 iron as well. So that should give us a nice dark green up in about four days time, mate, eh? Oh, stand back, look out Google Maps, man. This thing will be popping. <laughs> so um, if you are looking for more Plant Doctor products, go out and check out the website. They also do things like soil amendments, wetting agents, all of that sort of stuff. So you can use the discount code uh, GOLDLIFE. Uh, I'll leave it there on the screen. You can check it out. Uh, these codes are updated regularly, so uh, you'll have to subscribe to the channel for more updates on the code. <laughs> so um, when it does come time to using fertilizer, make sure you store it off of the ground in your shed. Essentially, um, 
if the concrete gets too cold or moisture starts to seep up from the concrete into the bag, you can get it all clumpy and whatnot. So um, make sure you're storing this off of the shed floor uh, on a shelf somewhere and out of the rain. Uh, furthermore, when we are filling up our spreaders, you know, broadcast or drop spreader, whatever we're doing, do it off of the lawn, mate, eh? So what we don't wanna do is accidentally spill something on the lawn and then you're just gonna burn that section. So do it off of the lawn. What I'll be doing today is going out with about four kilos of this gear across the whole lawn uh, and about 500 out the front, I think. So uh, that makes it four and a half for the whole lot. All right, this rain that's, uh, that's falling now brings me to my final point, which is, uh, which is weather. So I tried to time this with a rain fall event. Uh, so we're on track for about two mil today. So um, why have I got the sprinklers on? <laughs> well, essentially, we want to follow up a granular app like this, typically with about six mil of uh, simulated rainfall. So I'm going to get approximately two today from the rain. So I'm going to follow that up with four or five on the sprinklers, you know, as best I can. So I really want to water that in properly. However, if we were to make uh, an application to the leaf, we wanted to try and avoid the rain because we don't want to wash it into the soil profile. So... Um, yeah, so that's what we could do with rain. Now, too much rain on the other hand, if we were gonna say, get 10 mil, then that can be a problem, or 10 plus, you know, 15, 20, what that can do is actually cause our um, fertilizer to dump, which means uh, it'll leach out or just dump the whole lot uh, if it's a friction-based release formula. So, um, yeah, we just wanna be cognizant of the weather. So, uh, having said that, we do wanna avoid days above 30 degrees. So, um, if we're making a, uh, and a fertilizer application to the leaf blade, yeah, the potential is on a 30 degree day, you could cook your lawn. So um, you need to be mindful of that. So you may make that application towards the start of the day or the end of the day, allow it to dry off. So um, just keep that in the back of your mind. But uh, yeah, we've got some sky beers and, uh, and the sprinklers are on at the same time. So I'm sure my neighbors are gonna be looking at me a little bit confused, but trust the process, mate. All right, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Either if you're a veteran of this turf game or, uh, or just new here and want a few tips on how to look after your lawn, then feel free to subscribe. All right, you guys do me a wicked mad favor and take it easy. I'll chat you on.